I was born in Los Angeles, and I went to school, art school. Unfortunately, it took me about 12 years to get a BFA. I kept running back and forth to New York, chasing boys. I finally got a BFA, and I stayed in Los Angeles for quite a while. And I think, well, it, I decided to move to New York because I was a bit tired of putting husbands through their MFA degrees. And I decided once and for all, I was going to attempt to have a career in the art world. Now, I teach at School of Visual Arts, and I have been there for, I think, 32 years. I teach a foundation painting class. I teach a third year painting class. And I also teach a semester of the fourth year workshop. I make it from the very beginning. I tell my students there is a difference between being an artist and having a career in the art world. Careerism is careerism, whether or not you're trying to become a practicing dentist, a lawyer, an artist, or an actor. It's about people. It's about who you know, the connections of your friends, Throughout history, especially in the history of art, people have come up in groups. Their friends recommend each other. If you're fortunate enough to know a writer, that is the best as far as careerism. If you have any talent of talking about art, attaching yourself to a group of artists, and then joining them with your own abilities, performance, art, video, painting, etc. The gallery support structure that is still going strong will love you. In 1996, I decided to do a very large piece complaining on the New York Times front page. I had found my voice in talking about countries in crisis, I was what one would call a political junkie. It's important for young artists to start to do work on the base of what they themselves are interested in. And I was always interested in the kind of comedy that Lenny Bruce, Mort Saul, Elaine May, Mike Nichols did in the late 50s and 60s. And many of them used the paper. Mortsall would always come on stage holding a paper and then start to comment on that. I was not, unfortunately, John Stewart. So I decided I was going to do something like that uh, in my artwork. I started to uh, uh, comment on the front page of the New York Times in 1996. I could not resist doing it again in 2020, and that is my current work. I did no longer have any assistance because of thank you COVID, so it is take, going to uh, probably not even be finished before 2023 or 2024. But it will be historic. It will may not be relevant, but it will be historic. Um, I think one of the most important things that I have found is, and I advise my students on this, I, you always I tell the students, it's important to find your own voice. What is it that you're interested in? And how do you think you want to express it? We're lucky at this time in history that you're not sort of having to do the same work over and over. In other words, you can be a painter and you can be a performance artist and you could work in text. When you have an idea, is to try to figure out the best way that you want to express it. Well, I am a very frightened person. I don't appear to be as frightened, but I am. I also have a total aversion to flying. So, a lot of my early work, my mature work, had to deal with going to places without actually going to places. So I spent a lot of time in the libraries and in the Strand, which is one of the best bookstores in New York City, looking at maps. And from maps, 
I decided to see the world. And I started working very, very large from continents. And then I refined it a bit and went to specific areas in my paintings. And then I decided I was going to spend an incredible amount of time in one country. And I chose China. And nobody seemed at all interested at all. I still have one or two big paintings to finish up the history of China. I don't know if I will live so long, but I will attempt it. And so that whole idea of being a fearful flyer had opened up an entire, I don't know, 20 years of work, if not more. Well, I got up to the Ming Dynasty. Huge painting, over 20 some odd feet in four panels, black and white, like a porcelain glaze. It is dark, dead, beautiful, and it is still for sale. I make a lot of studies because, as I say, I'm a fearful person, so I never go to the big one first. I always start small, although I conceive of them large and then scale down. A total bad career move is that if anybody is here and listening into careerism, do not do this. Go directly to your large painting or forget about your large paintings and just make small ones. I'll tell you something, do not ever do this. I think the best advice that I could give people is to share their thoughts and feelings with one another. The world is made up of human beings, possibly animals, and we don't know about the aliens yet. But in order to really prosper and find yourself and your, combine your heart, your head, and your spirit, you are going to be touching all of these realms. Be kind. It sounds so stupid and fortune cooking. Share yourself. When you find you can share yourself, others will come to you and share themselves. As I mentioned earlier, and for one's own special gratification, um, it's all about people. It's all about who you know. I think generally people want to be helpful. You should feel that you're not in this society alone. I think the COVID situation has caused us to incredibly be more isolated naturally and for, inset, for good reasons. I'm finding in my own class a very strange experience. Uh, I've been teaching for a very, very long time, and many times in many classes I get the feeling that I know these people. Of course I don't really know them, but I have a feeling I know them. With these masks on, I don't feel this. It is very hard just to have that connection just with your vision of seeing each other's eyes. We are whole people, and I think we should try to learn about ourselves again through our hands, through our heart, and through our spirit.